in just a few more minutes, the sunshine is going to come streaming through this front glass door, and it's going to be just heavenly glorious to sit here. But did you know your plants could get sunburned? It's true. Um, the sun is not strong enough to get burned, especially through the windows. I know I think some of the rays get blocked through glass and others do not. But that rocking chair behind me is going to be sitting in the glorious, in fact, it is right now, right this minute, it's sitting in the glorious sunshine. I should go sit there. I think I'm going to do that because it hits the rocking chair before it hits this door. But ideally, the sun will come right through here. And I can sit at the computer in the sunshine, which is a great blessing in February, I'll tell you that. It makes you feel like you're on vacation. So, your plants can get sunburned too. I don't know if you knew that, but I'm on a roll today. No, I do not wear the same clothes day after day after day. But when I'm, you know, showered and clean and dressed and groomed and got a little bit of lipstick on and still have my dental issues, but... <laughs> Um, I just keep making videos as long as the ideas hold out, and it's been a while. I, I really miss making videos. I was kind of surprised. I, I feel like connected to all these mystery people out there and uh, have met some very interesting people on YouTube, very, very interesting people, so it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so it's good to be back. It's good to be back making videos again. But did you know your plants could get sunburned? And this is, uh, I'm not sure what kind of a title I'm going to use for this, but um, when you grow your own seedlings, um, you need to go through a process before you, you, you don't want to just take them directly from the house into the, the uh, garden. And it's nice if you can get the little peat pots or something where you just put the whole thing right down into the ground. And of course, tomatoes, you want to plant them deep as possible. Um, the first leaves that come, I'm, I'm sorry, I get distracted so quickly. The first leaves that come up, you want to at least take those off and um, bury the plant up to the next set of leaves when you put your tomatoes in, which is really nice to be able to do with like the peat pots and that kind of thing. But anyway, you don't want to take them directly from, like, let's say I, let's say I had a, um, bunch of seedlings coming up where they, the sun comes through my window here in the living room. Um, you wouldn't want to take them directly out to the outside. You have to kind of get them used to it gradually. And I didn't know that plants can actually get sunburned. So what you need to do is pretend, those of you who can get a tan, I cannot. I have freckles, freckles on my arms and freckles on my face. And, and I, I and I take it back. I tan a little bit. I end up getting precancerous damage quicker than I tan Irish. And uh, you see this color of hair in, in videos from Ireland, but I've only seen like two or three people in my whole entire life that have the exact same color hair I do. But when I look at videos of Ireland, there's a lot of it there. It has nothing to do with anything except for the fact that I sunburn. So I know about getting sunburned because I've had sun poisoning before and it is not fun. <laughs> so you don't want your plants to get sunburned and suffer. <laughs> I don't know if they really suffer, but um, so the idea is gradual. So you want to put them out in the direct sun for, for a few minutes and continue to do that gradually until they're used to the direct sun for the whole day. Don't do it overnight. And the same thing with the temperatures. You know, you might want to put them in the garage at nighttime and uh, then slowly get them used to um, the garden. Now, some of the things that you're going to plant early on in the gardening season, such as beets, carrots, cabbage, onions, um, beets, cabbage, cabbage, carrots, onions, peas that you can plant earlier and you don't have to worry so much about the cold soil. Um, it's not so much of an issue, but when you're talking about cucumbers or, um, which I don't think there's really any reason that you need to, that you need to put those in peat pots ahead of time. Because when I've done, when I've put things into the garden, and I mean this with all truthfulness and sincerity here, when I put things into the garden that I have grown from seed versus, you know, nourished along for weeks trying to get them started in peat pot kind of thing, or Dixie cups or whatever, paper cups, um, they seem to bear fruit about the same time. They seem to, you know, come into maturity about the same time, which kind of doesn't make any sense. But I kind of decided that I was swimming upstream with Mother Nature and uh, not understanding that 
the nature has its way of doing things and when we interfere we're not always we're not always welcome or productive so having said that you need to heart it's called hardening off sorry I'm looking bad here hardening off your um your plants and it's just as a process of getting them used to the sun and the temperature a little more a little more a little more on a gradual basis before you just throw them out there with the cold nights and the hot sun um, there are things that are an exception to this I would personally and there's a lot of things I would not start in peat pots um, I don't think you're going to get any advantage out of it for me that would be cucumbers um, winter squash zucchini probably maybe summer squash um, summer squash, winter squash, squash, pumpkin, uh, melons, watermelons, cantaloupe kind of thing. So uh, I think I'm going to move on to the next video. <laughs> I feel another one coming. God bless your efforts to prepare. Get your plants uh, accustomed slowly. Don't let them get sunburned.